we're holding Lamed Vov, the 36th characteristic one needs for the acquisition of Torah. Just left off. Misrachik min kovot. You distance yourself from kovot. You avoid it in the worst way. Ben rodi fachar kovot. Dovzem vur mi masha omru. Ka rodi fachar kovot a kovot borachas mi menu. Ba boreach min kovot a kovot defes achrov. It's interesting. I made a point. You see, you see, he quotes the source. In the parentheses, it says Mejitan Chuma. Mejitan Chuma doesn't use that, 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 that word. It doesn't say couple. It says Harodif Acha Sroro. Acha Sroro. Hasroro Borachs Menu. Vabareach Min Hasroro. Because Moshe Menu fled. Sroro means, doesn't mean covered. It means much more than that. You're in a position where you, do, where you dominate a lord over other people. That's Sroro. So if you flee from that, where you, you don't want to dictate to other people. Then Hashem puts you in a position of responsibility to oversee other people. It has to do with covet, but it's much more than covet. Then covet al the Torah, shiri Torah. So it's interesting. What's covet? Covet. We're talking about not honor. Covet means Torah flees from you, and if you flee from honor, from honor, then Torah will pursue you because that means he's humble. Because if you want the ultimate kavod, how does one merit the ultimate kavod through Torah? If you flee from honor, meaning human honor, Yorish kavod Torah, what do you get in its place? You get the real kavod. But if you go in, you're, fle- you're pursuing what's this? This human honor and a royal chvara Torah. What's the reason? It gains the humility. You know, the Gemara says that that if a person is a Balgaiva, Hashem says the world is not big enough for both of us. Okay? So if, we, if a person is Rodi Vacharakovit, you know, a person wants to wear the mantle of the king, the, the garments of the king. It's a chutzpah, right? Hashem gives lovesh, lovesh. Hashem loses us over. Who is cloaked in geus, in greatness? So you want kavod? Who do you think you are? You're a subject. You're a lowly subject of, of the king. And if the king's all walk over, why are you deserve? Why are you pursuing honor? Right? Honor is only the, the, the king deserves honor. By you wanting honor, it's 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 a disrespect. So therefore, it's it's a claim. You have no relevance to that. That means you don't appreciate what Kodesh Baruch Hu is. As a result of that, it's Barech Mi Menu. But if you go and you flee from it, and you recognize that the true honor is only at Kodesh Baruch Hu, then a Baruch Hu gives you the gift of the Torah. The main of Barech Mi Menu is Royal Kovra Torah. We can't even relate to a real berechem and a covenant. The Gemara tells of her story. I remember it tomorrow in, in, in Kotchip somewhere. Maybe Tumura, Croesus. Or it tells of a story. We're speaking about a, 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 a maturgamon. In the olden days, you would have a, the Rosh Hashibah would say a shir, and he'd have a spokesman. And he, has say, he would say over, discussed it, if the, Reb, if the Rosh Hashibah would quote his father, he would say, Avi Mori, or Rebbe Mori, and then he would say it over by the name of the person. Just like Mark Kedushin. Mm-hmm. So there was this person. He would say over a piece of t- the Torah. Mm-hmm. So the Maturgum, the spokesman, he would say over his own Torah. He wouldn't even say w- what the person told him. So when somebody saw this, he says, you know something? That level of, of humility I have, I have never reached. That level of... And, and it, he wasn't phased by it. You hear this? The Roshiva who was saying over, and the Maturgum, the spokesman, said over his own Torah, not even what he was told. Wasn't upset. Not phased. He says, his level of, of humility, I haven't yet achieved that level of humility. So we're talking about a whole different level of what, what it means to be humble. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it doesn't mean anything. It's a famous story of Shol Salanter. Shol Salanter, you know, he was the founder of the Muslim movement. So initially, there was tremendous opposition to it. Because they all was a waste of time. What do you have to study Musa? 
Musar instead of studying Torah. A person has, a, has an hour to study a blot Gemara. You study Gemara, you don't study Musar. You become what they call fafront, come a frumi. You know, some people, they were literally violent, I mean, violent opposition, violent opposition. So Rabbi Yisrael Salanta, but because of who he was, nobody could oppose Rabbi Yisrael Salanta. But they tried in the worst way to openly detract from his value. So he was in Vilna. He was in Vilna. And what? No, so first, they, every Shabbos, he would allow people to ask him any question anywhere in the, in the Torah. You know, he would go and he would field the questions. So somebody posed a question to him. He says, the first man has an hour, and now he's able to learn two blot gemara. And he's able to study Musar during that hour. What should he study? So he says, you study Musar, and you find three other hours to study gemara. That's what he said to him. Okay, that was Rabbi Sarasalad's answer. Okay, you put things in perspective. That's the value of Musar. So the story was, they, they want to embarrass him. Rabbi Sarasalad knew the Torah, and his level of genius it was beyond Rabbi Sarasalad. And... They, before the, he would give a public lecture, they put up, you know, all the, uh, the sources of the material that he was going to speak on. And they went and they changed it. So he would say one thing, be prepared to something else. So they publicly embarrass him. Shor Salanta walks in, he gives a glance at the, at the, at the Marmacomas, at the sources that originally he had given. And he sees they were all changed. And he just gives a glance at it. And he gets up and he hesitates and he says, a shiro according to the new sources. Okay? It's his students, his closest told me to ask them, why did you hesitate? Before he said the shit, he hesitated for a moment. Is it because he had to think about what he had to say? I mean, his mind was like, like, like a computer. So he says, no. He says, I thought the reason why I hesitated was maybe I should step off away from him because there was too much kaiba. Because it was a joke, you know? So therefore, then he decided for the sake of the Shem Shemayim to show that a person who studies Musi is not less than a person who doesn't study Musi is even more, that's the reason why I said this year. But that was the basis for the hesitation. Okay? This is Barech Men You have to bend over backwards when it comes to a question that you may be perceived in a, in a better light and you may get the honor. So before he spoke to they were not learning the Moral? It wasn't here. It was, it was a... He set up a whole system. He would have different locations. They were called uh, Bote Musa. Yeah. They were like Musa rooms. People go and they had the Svarim there. And it was very much good. Not a per person studied only at a personal level. People always studied on a very personal level. Okay. But a whole movement and a system had to emphasize the points that every day you have to take out time. There's no What we do here is, 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 a, is a derivative of that, of every system. Because the altar Slabotka. You know, Slabata was a Musa Yeshiva, yeah. and he was a student of Rabbi Sosalanta. He was a Talmud of Rabbi Sosalanta. Rav Slabata was a Talmud. Tells they were opposed to Musa. Very of Tell. It wasn't a Musa Yeshiva. There was a whole split in Tells over it. The reason why Valoshan closed, the Valoshan closed, because there were Maskilim. It closed because there was no Musa in Valoshan. There was no Musa in Valoshan. The whole story of Rabbi Chaim Bersko, Rabbi Sosalanta went to Rabbi Chaim. Wanted to encourage him to they should have a, a Musa session in Slavot in Volozhin. Um, and Reb Chaim says, Musa, he, he said in Yiddish, David would appreciate this because he you know, prides himself in Litvish Yiddish for 20 years. He says, Musa is medicine. Musa is medicine. A gazunta mensch darf nicht medicine. If you're a healthy person, you don't have to take medicine. If you're a sick person, well, Hashem, people are healthy, therefore we don't need medi medication. There's no need for Musa. When they had the problem with the Maskilim who were formed by the government, and they had a close, he says, Rabbi Sosalant was right. They would have learned Musa, there would have never been the problem, they would have to close the issue. They wouldn't have had those kinds of students there. What? Study, you have to study certain works. And you give lectures. He says, the Gemara, the Gemara. You call it from the Gemara. Look, if you're at a certain level, you can... Okay. Okay. What is the word means literally. Yeah. What does Osur mean? Forbidden. Why forbidden? Means because you reigned in, you are bound, it binds you. Mutter means open, it permits you. 
means untied. Asur means bound, tied. Mutter means untied. Mutter means to study works which bind the person, which allow the person to rein in on himself. Okay, you know Rabbi Toby Kaplan? Alan, that was Rabbi Kaplan. Rabbi Kaplan, he was in Israel. He made a, what we call a revolution in Muslim in Israel. Today, because of what he's done, every single yeshiva, every kol of studies in Muslim, because of what he did. And this he just started about 15, 15 years ago. He started certain things. He originally uh, set up certain, a certain system put certain people in certain positions, paid them to encourage it, to give shiurim and musa, you know, to give what we call the shmoos, so that kind of thing, to encourage it, or to write, um, to write novelay in musa, not only in Gemara, you know, insights in, in Hashkofa, and if they would study certain svarim, they would get a certain um, avocations, if they would study musa shorim, and then they would take a written exam on it. And they would study the Ramban, and they study Chovas Levavos, and they would take exams on this, and they would meet once a week and discuss it, and they would get they would get paid. And from this, now he doesn't have to pay anymore. It's it's already taken on uh, life on, of of its own.